was the relationship um smooth was it good was it toxic it was toxic yeah. did you had to go through any mental and st- mental struggles yeah yeah mm-hmm. let me hear about it toxic so from day one i would say that i probably saw the red flags So, did the person like try to control you or anything like that? Yes, I couldn't. I couldn't go anywhere. I could hardly go anywhere. I mean, I, I, <laughs> I was at church one mm. night. Church, because I started feeling so depressed that I, I actually took church for it. As an immigrant in a foreign country, you're faced with problems and challenges from all angles. From trying to update your status from undocumented to documented to being used by some family members, so-called friends, strangers, and even some employers. If you're not mentally, physically, and emotionally strong, you're more certain to break along the way. But out of all the hurdles that immigrants have to overcome, Relationships has always seemed to be the most challenging, trying, and toughest of them all, which in most cases is the gateway towards immigrant freedom and limitless opportunity. Meet my guest as she briefly opened up about her journey from undocumented to documented and how she overcome an abusive relationship. We're going to start out by a little bit about you. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Which parish are you from in Jamaica? Kingston. Kingston? Yeah. Born and raised? Born and raised. What was your aspiration growing up? Um, to be honest, <laughs> I don't know. I don't I don't think I had I don't think I had any, you know, any specific aspirations. Like I just know that I wanted to have money. I mm-hmm. wanted to be able to, you know, afford what I want when I want it and to look good. That like that was That's it. That was basically it. And it's not anything, because obviously I'm not gonna think about doing something wrong. Right. But a job that would get me enough money so mm-hmm. that I can buy what I want, go where I wanna go, and look good. Okay. Um, which high school you went to in, in Jamaica? The Queen's School and Westwood High School for Girls. So, um, you go to college after high school? Yeah, I went to college. Which, I, which teacher's college? Teacher's college. Oh, you went to teacher's college? Yeah. Okay, what was your major? English, language, and literature. Oh, so you're a trained teacher? I'm a trained teacher. Okay. So, after you graduated college, was it hard for you to find a job in Jamaica? Um, yes and no. You know, it had its, it, it was twofold. So the high school system, I had a little problem initially because, you know, everybody wants somebody with experience, whatever, whatever. But I had a friend who um, got me a job in a tertiary level institution. So that worked out for me. Did you like your job after you started teaching? I liked my job at the tertiary level. But when I got to the The high high school level, no, I did not. No. No. So too was much. it a rough experience? Yeah, too much for too little. At what point did you come to the conclusion that being a teacher in Jamaica was not working out for you? And you need to leave? Um, as soon as I started working at the high school. As soon as you started yeah, working. Yeah, as soon as I worked, started working at the high school, I realized that that was not that was not it. That was not it. That was not it. How did you plan it out in your head that listen? I'm tired of this. I need to leave. What was it? You know, like, what what, what went through your head? So, how, how you plan it out? I didn't plan it out. I have a friend. I always share everything with her. And Where she was, was like, that friend? She was in the States. <clears throat> okay, she, she was, was in the States. Yeah. Okay. And she's like, um, I, I've been telling you to just leave and come. And I'm like, girl, no, you know, yeah. it, it was just, I was just thinking about the risk of it all. Mm. You know, 
what people might say, oh, you leave your good teaching job, as they would say, yeah. to come overseas or to go to run off, go foreign, go do what? Right, you right. You know, so, yeah. So it, it took me out. It took me a while. <laughs> okay. It All took right. me a couple of months to actually decide, and I really didn't do much planning because I'm like, you know, if I sit down and think about this too much more, gonna I'm going to change my mind. Oh, okay. Right. So I just decided that Christmas was coming, that Christmas break. Mm -hmm. You know what? I've had enough and I'm just going to go okay. and just stay. Um, so you pack your bag, left Jamaica and now yeah. reaching America. Yep. So what was the first feeling like when you reach in America now and say, all right, <laughs> now I go back, you know? How did you feel? Initially, to be honest, you never feel anyway. Initially, you know, mm -hmm. it's not until it start kicking in that mm -hmm. look, you know, I have no job. Yeah. Yeah, live at people's house. Mm -hmm. You don't know when you'll get your thing together. Mm -hmm. That's when it started to hit me. Right. That's when it started to hit me. And I thought it would have been a better feeling, so to speak, mm -hmm. for a longer time. But like after a month, mm -hmm. I started feeling like, ooh, oh, you know. Yeah. So what was your first move? Was it to find a job immediately or to jump on the mission to get yourself documented? Job, I know that job couldn't find <laughs> based on where I was and I wasn't thinking about. I didn't have many persons here, so I never had many options to say, okay, you know, maybe I can go somewhere else and stay with this person and try to get a job. I never had that luxury. Right. So the job was the, was not the furthest thing, but it was kind of not the on the forefront okay. because I had a timeline. Mm -hmm that I was working with mm -hmm. in my mind as to how fast I would be able to get myself documented so that I would be able now to right. get the job and you know. Mm. Now that we get a feel of who she is and the reason why she decided to stay in America, let us jump to the relationship aspect part of it. Let us see how she continues her journey from meeting people on dating apps to forming genuine connection. You know, some of the things her journey entails. First, let me say it was not. The time that I had in my mind was unrealistic. Let me put it, let me put that out there first. Um, it involved a lot of going on dating apps. It involved a lot of probably trying to say, all right, maybe you can't talk to this person that you really don't even want to talk to. Like it, it, it wasn't, it, it involved persons telling you, oh, you know, I got you. I can, I can do this for you and nothing. So a lot of empty promises. So you say you, you jump on um, dating up. Yeah. And a, a friend told me that, you know, she met her spouse on a dating app. Mm hmm. And I realized that overall, it's a, it's a thing here, you know, right. even people who just really not looking for anything like that, mm -hmm. they're on dating apps. So oh, I'm okay. like, let me try, let me try that out. So did you meet anybody? Yeah. So what yeah. was the first date? Was the first date right or wrong? Mm, not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> wrong. Wrong. Mm -hmm. Very wrong. Very, Very wrong. wrong. Yep. Very wrong. Because I'm the type of person, really, if I'm not interested i'm not interested mm -hmm. i could not bring myself to anything else mm -hmm. even though i knew mm -hmm. what i wanted mm -hmm. so the least good thing somebody would say would turn me off okay. I, my friend would be like you know no you can't do that you have to try but can't remember the, you know yeah. no no mm. i couldn't so, so you couldn't do it so the first date went through the window yep and the second <laughs> and the second and one the <laughs> And they kept going through the window. Wow. You didn't meet anybody on the app? No. And then what was the next move? I had I had met somebody, though, mm -hmm. through a friend. Right. And I thought that would have been it. Okay. Being in the States taught me, don't, don't, don't assume, mm -hmm. don't sit, don't waste no time. Mm-hmm. Just keep going. It's, this is a place I've just keep going. Right. 
So met this person, um, you know, the person tell me, yeah, you know, they got me. It was somebody who I actually liked, right. somebody who I figured liked me too. So everything was genuine, which is what I wanted. Right. All right. Um, spent probably like two, three months around this person. And it was just a waste only to find out that the person was, was married. Was the relationship um, smooth? Was it good? Was it toxic? It was toxic. Yeah. Did you have to go through any mental and st- mental struggles? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Let me hear about it. Toxic. So from day one, I would say that I probably saw the red flags. Mm. Before and after the marriage, mm. it was an uphill climb. Uphill climb. Yep, it was. Um, accusations of different right. things, left, right, and center. Insecurity right. was the biggest problem, I would say, in the relationship. Insecurity. Uh, not, not on my part. Right. But insecurity was the biggest problem. Oh, okay. Um, so... Did the person like try to control you or anything like that? Yes, I couldn't. I couldn't go anywhere. I could hardly go anywhere. I mean, I, I, <laughs> I was at church one mm. night, church, because I started feeling so depressed that I, I actually took church for it. Right. Yeah, I started to go to go to church twice per week, Sundays, which is you know the regular service, and Wednesdays I'd go to Bible study. I just needed an outlet. I just needed something. And I would find myself at church every Sunday crying Mm. at church. Like, you know, when they start singing certain songs or when the sermon Mm. speaks to something that kind of touch you, Mm -hmm. found myself like crying and, you know, whatever. I was at church one Wednesday night and the person came over there to the churchyard because the church was literally across from the road, across the road from where we lived. Came over there, and because I didn't believe that I was at church. So they want to make sure it's at church. Yeah. Yeah. Some people, and even jobs too, right? They use and abuse and take this advantage of individuals that they know don't have papers. Right. And that happened a whole lot of time in America. Yeah. You know? And them underpay the people, them, they mistreat them, and so on. And, um, if you try to complain or retaliate or whatever, you know, them use that and hang it over you like. Yeah. Was that any of your situation? Yeah. On a daily basis. The only thing they say must give us due to Caesar. The only thing that I never had to worry about, mm-hmm. to be honest, was bills and food. Right. Which people might say, you know, that's a good thing. Like, be grateful because a lot of persons come here and have to be outside or whatever. Mm-hmm. But I never had to worry about how much anything in the house cost mm-hmm. or anything. Right. But at the end of the day, that was all, I think, in the name of or in the form of control. So was this, was the person rushing the process, like trying to get the process done or were they um, dragging it out? Initially, they were rushing mm-hmm. or trying to get it done so that i could be able to you know get a job but then after a while when the insecurity started to set in mm-hmm. no it was like oh i'm not gonna do this now i'm not gonna put this in now right yeah so even after eventually putting it in <laughs> it came down to the wire right of the interview and the day before the interview mm-hmm. they're gonna say they're not going to go. The person said they're not going yes. to go. Yes. The day before the, the day interview. The day before the interview. Mm-hmm. Wow. So what did you do at that point? Cry. Cry, 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 cry. Spoke to a few people who I knew, you know, who were like um, Christians who would pray. Mm-hmm. And, you know, they prayed with me and tell me, you know, 
don't worry about it if 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 whatever you know however the lord see fit mm -hmm. that's the way it's gonna be and in that moment i was like you know was it even worth it at all mm -hmm. the relationship basically now for me went from being toxic to being more of something abusive not physically right but abusive mentally, mentally yeah. verbally like it was it was yeah it was no abuse that's right. how that's that's where it was like mentally how did this affect you like weren't you thinking about uh, you know you want to give up at this point or something i've i had a few times to be honest that i you know thought about it you know but I wonder what it would have been like if I never came, you know? Mm -hmm. But I was already too deep mm -hmm. in the process mm -hmm. to give up. I tell people I'm not a quitter. Right. I don't. If I, if I think I'm not going to be able to do it, I'm just not going to do it from beginning. Right. Once I start, right. I'm going to finish. When you did that interview and you get that, you know, get your document or mm -hmm. whatever, was that a relief for you? Like, mm -hmm. did you try to seek, did you get it in your hand at the same time? I got it. No, not at the same time. So I got it like a, probably like a, like two weeks later. Did the person know that you get it? No, they didn't know. Cause I would be the only one that really checked the mailbox, you know, okay. because they'd be at work. So I was on it. Like I was watching it. Right. My, I think my friend who I came and stayed with initially when I just came here to the States, she had my the account for mm. that, um, for the documents too. And she was on it too. And she's like, girl, you realize that they said the document um, right. was mailed? And I'm like, what? So we were both on it. And once I saw that it was delivered, mm -hmm. I went to the mailbox instantly. Yeah. I collected it. I couldn't even keep it in the house. Wow. Yeah, I couldn't keep it in the house. Because I had a friend. I was fearful mm -hmm. that uh, they would find it and try to sabotage. Yes. Right. Yeah. Go hold my dog. I'd rather be alone. You can't go hold me down. You can't tell me what to do. I get to understand that you're now in the military. Yes. So you're, you know, a strong military woman. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You know, your journey to the military and so on. How is that experience for you? Um, all I can say is things things are working themselves out. Things are working themselves yeah, out. Yeah, things are working themselves Was the training any at all challenging for you and you just decide that, hey, I need to do this? Um, The training... The training was challenging, but it's nothing that I couldn't um, right. manage. Because you already tell yourself. So. I already made up my mind. I told you, once my mind is made up, once mm -hmm. I say I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. Let's go. Put your head in your back. Welcome to hell. Get off my butt. Double time. Hurry up. You need to move. Let's go. Why are you walking? Not back on you, China. Pick it up. Keep it high nice for it. For the next 10 weeks, you'll go through some intense training. United States soldier. What would you say to a friend or people in general mm -hmm. would want to come to America and run off? Come with a plan A to Z. Come with a plan. And it's not a better rule. Mm -hmm.